I'm 19 years old and I'm from Kenya. Hello, my name is Saula. I'm 10 years old. I'm from Ethiopia. Hello, my name is Daga. I'm 11 years old. I'm from Ethiopia. Hello, my name is Terry. I'm 13 years old and I'm from India. Hello, my name is David. I'm 10 years old. I'm from Kenya. Hello, my name is Doma. I'm 10 years old. I'm from India.
that other team members could not have filled. And so it was just an encouragement to me that God uses you just as you are. You don't have to become someone different or specialize in this or know how to do this. Just say, God, here I am. Take what I am, take what I know, and let me serve you. And it's beautiful how he knits the entire trip together. You encounter a number of very difficult realities on our missions. And I remember a particular trip with my nine-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old girl in the group home who was seven months pregnant with her father's child. And to see our daughter be able to serve her in the name of Jesus, to wash her feet, to play games with her, to make necklaces with her, and, and to just love on her. He is big and he is powerful. And he is all loving and he is all giving. And if you want to experience that on a different level, you have to go outside of yourself. And wherever that mission field is, you need to be in it. It's an act of faith. And it's an active faith. It's absolutely mind-boggling how God impacts us, how he shapes our hearts, how he shapes our minds, how we begin to love the things that he loves, how we begin to despise the things that he despises. There's this walk, there's this experience, there's this life change. And I think missions is really a core part of how God accomplishes that in us. If you've never been on a trip, there is a piece of your faith that has not yet been opened. It is a gift from God to serve Him and to go be loved. Our big kids are my heroes. They sacrificed so much and willingly done so and joyfully done so. I remember when we first got home with Haley and she was struggling so much. She literally just had so much trauma in her past and she would scream almost night and day. And I can remember our big kids praying right away that God would open our hearts to be willing to adopt again. I feel like we taught our kids the gospel from the time they were babies. But to see them live out the gospel every day has been the greatest joy and privilege for me. After adopting Kaylee and understanding and finding out what the need was globally, how many kids are waiting, there's millions of kids that are without family, we decided to adopt again. And through the process, as hard as it was, the reward was, was far greater to our family, and especially for us, than the challenges that we went through. We had every fear um, brought to life. We had fears of our, how it would impact our biological kids. Would it disrupt our life as we knew it? And pretty much every fear uh, came true, and we were rocked. We learned that our lives are not our own, and we learned to trust Jesus in such deeper ways as we started to surrender and give our lives over to His hands rather than what our plans for our lives originally. Adoption did cost us. Uh, it, it, it's going to cost anybody. Anything that's worth while and yet, there's going to be a cost to you. When my parents first brought up the idea of adopting, I was totally against it. I was like, there's no way that God could be calling our family to this. And fast forward five years later, and after we've adopted three kids, just seeing how God has restored and redeemed their lives is like watching a miracle happen every day. And just the transformation that he's done in me through adoption is amazing. Do you ever ask yourself, what did I miss today that God wanted me to see? Who did I walk past that maybe God wanted me to reach out to? Jesus was always living the interruptible life. He was on his way to important places with important things to do. And yet, when the children tried to make their way to him and the disciples said no, he stopped and he said, wait, this is more valuable in the kingdom of God than you have any idea. And he, he spent time holding them and nurturing them and taking care of them. In a culture where kids were not valued very much, he made them his priority. He had time to be interrupted. I don't want to walk past things that God wants me to stop for. I don't want to walk past people God wants me to engage with or help. We wake up in the morning, we go to bed at night, we feel like we accomplish very little that's going to make a difference years down the road. God says, I will give you opportunities every single day 
to make a difference, to change your world and the world of somebody else. And maybe that comes when we say yes to God and say, okay, God, what is it you want from me? I'm here, I'm listening. Maybe it's when we stop for a moment and we listen to the, the voice and see the face of a child that I can make a difference. I think that days like today break into our world, break into our routine, so that we're interrupted for a second, so we just don't sing the same song, have that same lovely time at church, really appreciate the pastor's sermon, but sometimes we need something to shout at us. That's what opportunities like today give us. A chance to live like Jesus did, to live the interrupted life. My name is Kathy. My name is Brad. My name is Christine. I'm Jen. I'm Brody. I'm Kennedy. And I am. And I am. And I'm a child of God. And I'm a child of God. And I'm a child of God. And I am a child of God.